Have you ever wondered how an iPod works? I mean, it's actually pretty incredible if you think about it. I mean, it's such a small, tiny thing, but inside of it fits over 2,000 songs. If it were the year 1975 and I wanted to carry my entire music collection with me, that would be pretty difficult. So what is it that we figured out since 1975 that lets us store so much information in such tiny spaces? And who makes this technology? And where is it made? Let's see if we can figure out together how an iPod works. We'll start by taking this iPod apart and see what we can find inside. These are the brains of the iPod. This is where 2,000 songs are stored. But this is really small. How is it that an entire music collection, 2,000 songs, fits into this tiny thing. The rest of the iPod is just packaging, batteries, and supporting electronics. All of the songs in your iPod are stored on a single crystal of silicon that's smaller than my thumb. And if I were to take the packaging off of it, it would look something like this. Electronic circuits work by moving, storing, and sensing the charges of electrons. Modern electronics are a network of electronic switches which can be turned on or off by being connected to other electronic switches. An iPod stores its music as a long series of ones and zeros. In electronic circuits, a one can be represented as a switch being turned to its on position, and a zero as a switch being turned off. This requires millions of switches per song, and many, many connections between the switches. To make the complicated electronics in our iPods, we need hundreds of millions of switches which would be very difficult to make if we did it by hand, like they used to do in the 1940s. The problem of increasing complexity of circuits has been solved by the invention of the integrated circuit, in which switches, called transistors, are made very, very tiny, so small that you could, fit, that you could fit hundreds of thousands of them on the cross-section of a human hair. This is done by building all of the switches and connections between them into a single crystal of silicon. are so small that they have been made in super clean rooms where there's absolutely, where there's very, very little dust. Uh, trying to build an integrated circuit in a room where there's dust in the air is like trying to build a building while there are 100 ton boulders falling from the sky. That's the scale of it. That's how small these transistors are. And so we have to wear these crazy outfits which protect the chips from us. They don't protect me from anything. And because humans were covered in hair, were covered in dust, were covered in sweat, and we want to try as hard as we can to keep any of that from getting onto our chips. Since, you know, from the chips perspective, a hair is equivalent to the size of a, a whale. Integrated circuits are the brains of technology. They are in our cell phones, they are the film and the displays of our digital cameras. They are at the heart of our personal computers, and the internet could not exist without them. They run the cruise control in our cars and control the traffic lights. I could go on and on and on. Here at Harvard, I design integrated circuits to do things that you don't normally think of when you think of electronics. Biology. I take biological samples and put them on top of my integrated circuits to, to independently move around cells and some very small drops of fluids to do biology experiments that would normally take many very hardworking, dedicated biology grad students to do that I can do sitting in front of my computer while drinking a cup of tea. Here, we show the chip that we designed in our lab move two cells. On the left, a lung cell taken from a rat, and on the right, a yeast cell. The cells move as we program them. Here, we have them dancing a waltz. circuits can be used for all sorts of things that can be found basically everywhere all around us. And in places like Harvard University, researchers are finding all kinds of new and exciting uses for integrated circuits, such as in biotechnology. So 
There's a whole wide open world out there and all kinds of interesting uses yet to be discovered for integrated circuits that maybe you someday can figure out for us.